Can natural curl patterns change over time? Well, that's what we're going to be discussing here today. I had some of you submit photos of your hair. If you recently experienced your natural curls becoming looser over time, or maybe you didn't have curls before and you've suddenly developed curls, let's break it down. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Gina and here I make videos all about naturally curly hair. I love talking about the science of hair, helping you problem solve with your curls and doing really simplified step-by-step -step tutorials. So if you're not already subscribed, be sure to do so before you go because I make videos like this every single week. So there are two types of changes we are going to be discussing here today. And the first one, and this is actually the one that most of you submitted, this is when your hair was much looser and it has gradually become a lot curlier as you have started taking care of your curls more and wearing your natural curls. This is very common and it happens as you start taking care of your curls because if your hair was previously damaged, then as it becomes healthier, it's going to go back to its natural texture that you have genetically. Also, if you previously didn't treat your curls like curls and you treated it like straight hair, like you brushed it out and you didn't really try and encourage those curls, then it's probably looking a lot curlier now that you've started styling it like curly hair. You could also have randomly gotten curls because of internal factors, which we will get into. And then the other less common occurrence is when you had curly hair, but it has started to become a lot looser or maybe you even lost all of your curls and now you have straight hair. So this can be caused by external factors such as damage if you suddenly started straightening all the time, but it can also be from internal factors, which we will get into. So what actually makes our curl pattern and how is our curl pattern determined? Well, research shows that our curl pattern is determined by the shape of our hair follicle. The hair follicle is like the bulb that's within our scalp. It sits within our skin and it's what actually produces the hair. And hair follicles can be shaped and turned in all different ways, but research has shown how curly hair has a curved or a tilted hair follicle. And apparently the more tilted the hair follicle, the curlier the hair will be. And so then what causes this shape? Well, apparently it's just from our genetics. So if it's from our genetics, then can that follicle shape actually change? And that would be how people have a change in hair pattern. So sources actually say that the follicle shape is set for life, but it does undergo some changes, which when I read this, I was like, that's kind of contradictory. But as you may know, our hair goes through its natural hair growth cycles. There is multiple stages within the hair growth cycle. And the final stage being the resting phase, which is where the hair actually sheds and the hair follicle actually shrivels up. So that's when it is changing shape. But apparently once a new hair grows in that same hair follicle, it returns to its natural shape or that naturally curly shape of that hair follicle. But what regulates this regrowth in the hair follicle is still a mystery. So scientists believe that the differences in cell behavior during the production of a hair fiber is what contributes to the hair shape. So environmental factors such as chemical exposure, stress, temperature changes, and even UV exposure can influence this genetic programming. So to sum up this section, which there's not a lot of research on this, so it's really hard to make a conclusion, basically our hair shape or our curl shape is determined by our hair follicle. What determines that hair follicle shape is our genetics, but what can impact our genetics we know that some environmental factors can, but the rest of it is really still unknown. You know, what changes how our cells produce and what changes our natural genetics over time. So what factors are known based on research to change the shape of our curl? Let's first cover some of the internal factors that actually impact our scalp and that hair follicle and how our hair grows out of our head. So the first one we already talked about being genetics. Also hormonal changes, this is a big one. This has a big impact on our hair's health, how thick our hair is, our texture, all of that, and including our curl pattern. Aging is also a big one. We know our hair becomes gray over time. It can change in texture and perhaps it can also change in its shape or pattern as well. Also stress is a big one. Any type of illnesses, medications, especially hormonal medications are known to change how our hair looks. Chemotherapy is also a big one that I've heard from you all that you've had changes to your curl pattern afterwards. Diet and nutrition is another one. So deficiencies in your diet or in your health when it comes to iron, vitamin D and vitamin B12. Those are the three vitamins and nutrients that are known to impact the health of our hair. So now let's cover some of the external factors or the environmental 
chemical factors that are known to change our hair shape. And that really has to do with the lengths of our hair. So this we are talking about the hair that is already grown out of our scalp, which is essentially dead. Our hair is not alive and living. It grows out of our scalp. So these are changes that we make on our existing hair. So it's first helpful to understand the different bonds in our hair. You might have heard a lot of talk about bonds recently when it comes to bond building products, but our hair has multiple different bonds and that's just the makeup of the strength of our hair or the fibers of the hair. And as I said, our hair is made up of keratin, which is a protein, and there's disulfide bonds. And those bonds can be damaged permanently. So that really affects the health of our hair. And this can only be permanently changed. Like if you got a perm or if you got some type of chemical straightening treatment done in the salon. And then there are hydrogen bonds, and these actually temporarily break naturally when our hair becomes wet. This is why when we get our hair wet in the shower, our curls stretch out and our hair almost looks straight, and then once it dries, it shrinks back up, and that is because the hydrogen bonds are naturally breaking and reforming. Hydrogen bonds can be impacted by heat and also humidity, the water that's in the air. You might notice if you have naturally curly hair that your hair really shrinks up in the humidity because the water in the air is breaking those hydrogen bonds. It's also important to understand the cuticle layer of the hair that is the outermost layer of the hair it's kind of like shingles it raises and lowers as your hair swells when it gets wet lets moisture in and out and a healthy cuticle is functional and letting moisture in but not too much and also sealing and locking in that moisture and not losing it so damage can actually weaken our hair's bonds and our cuticle so think of damage that's from heat so if you straighten your curls if you get regular blowouts use very high heat on your diffuser any type of chemical treatments done in the salon line also high girl fatigue is another one that can damage the bonds in your hair and your cuticle and that occurs actually from water water can be very damaging for our hair if you are wetting your hair multiple times a day or if you wet your hair every single day and i mean like saturating it i've done a whole video on high girl fatigue before that i can link for you down below if you are concerned that you might have that from over wetting your hair and there's also damage to your hair's bonds that can occur on the surface of your hair this is mechanical damage that is done by by over brushing your hair. I'm someone that loves brush styling, but I really probably need to give it up because it can cause chipping in the cuticle, which can weaken the hair. It can let in too much moisture and moisture can also escape easily if you have cracks or chips in your hair's cuticle. And then there's also buildup. Buildup is another major cause of your curl pattern really loosening over time because it really weighs down the hair. Buildup can occur from hard water minerals and I have a whole video as well all about hard water. It's one of the most common causes of a lot of hair issues that people don't even realize because it's just in their natural water at home. Tons of homes in the US and other countries as well naturally have hard water. It's not bad, it's just that it adheres to the hair, especially if you're using like very mild shampoos and you're co-washing, that's not able to remove hard water minerals. You need a special shampoo that is designed to remove hard water minerals. So I cover all of that in the video, but it's definitely something to consider, especially if you're somebody that has recently moved and suddenly you're losing your curls, definitely look into the hardness of your water in your home. And also, buildup can occur just from products. Even curly girl products or products that don't have ingredients that you commonly think of with buildup, oils and butters can build up on the hair, especially for people who have very fine hair or if you have a low porosity hair that really accumulates buildup. A lot of those heavy ingredients can weigh down the hair and make it appear looser and less curly. Also, over moisturizing your hair. I do hear this one a lot, especially when people are just getting started taking care of their curls and they're really moisturizing their curls or trying to recover from damage. But if your hair is already damaged and it's very porous, it can really get over moisturized easily. So if you just started like following the curly girl method or if you've just started using a ton of really moisturizing creams and deep conditioning you could be stretching out your curls over time by just weighing it down with too much moisture and so the way to fix that is really just to clarify your hair use a little bit less moisture and you can fix it over time but you really just have to remove that buildup of excess moisture and also work on repairing your hair with those bond builders if you think you have caused like severe damage from over moisturization or even from high growth fatigue another important thing to consider is sometimes it's just a change in the length of our hair. Did you recently get a haircut to where you cut off quite a bit of hair and now you're not seeing as much curls? Or it could be the opposite in that you recently got a haircut and now your curls are really springing up because they don't have that weight on them. Because longer hair is going to be heavier. That's just the nature of it. And the heavier our hair is, and also the more moisturized our hair is, it's really going to elongate and that gravity is going to pull down the curl. 
Also, if you are someone that naturally has looser curls at the roots, which is very common in curlier hair at the ends, if you get a very short haircut, you are basically cutting off that natural curl that you have at the ends of your hair. So your hair is gonna look a lot looser if you're just seeing that looser texture you have up at the roots. Nothing wrong with that, it's super common, but just something to consider if you recently basically cut off the curls that you had. So now let's talk about whether if it's possible to actually alter the shape of your curls or improve your curl pattern or loosen it depending on what you want to do. So basically the answer is yes and no. You can't change your genetics and you can't create curls that don't exist naturally. You can only enhance them if you are looking to do that. And you can only really manipulate those hydrogen bonds like we talked about. So depending on how you style, you can encourage your curls. You can also repair the disulfide bonds with bond building treatment. So that's really the only way to repair damage on your existing hair. Because once your hair is damaged, you have to get that damage cut off to have healthy hair. But bond builders have shown to actually repair the broken bonds in the hair and help improve the hair strength. Whereas protein treatments do strengthen the hair too, but it's kind of temporary because they can just build up on the hair. And once you wash those off, your hair is not gonna feel like brittle again, or it's not gonna have that strength. It's really bond builders that can go into the deep inner workings of the hair and repair or relink those broken bonds. So as I mentioned in the beginning with the science scientific research, you can't actually change the shape of your hair follicle. If we could, can you imagine how people would be getting treatments done or taking medications to make their hair curly? So other ways to encourage your curls or to enhance your curls, if you are struggling with them being a lot looser than they used to be, you can clarify to remove buildup and then do a nice deep conditioning treatment. Unless if you think your curls are over moisturized, then skip the deep conditioning treatment. But clarifying just removes any type of buildup, whether if that's from protein or moisture overload and just gives you a clean slate. I also recommend using a chelating shampoo to remove hard water buildup. That does also clarify the hair. So that's a really great option if you think you might have that hard water buildup. And also getting that damage cut off is the best way to improve the health of your hair. I noticed that even when I just had a small amount of damage lingering on the ends of my hair, it was so much harder to manage. And then once I finally got it all cut off, it was such a difference and just so much easier to manage and my curls really sprung up. You can also encourage your curls or help shrink them up more with different styling techniques like brush curling, but again, you don't wanna damage your curls. And then also finger coiling, that's another way to really enhance your curls. And also diffusing, I feel like people don't talk about this enough, but diffusing is a great way to really shrink up your curls because it sets those hydrogen bonds like we talked about in place by drying your hair faster. So that way your curls are not becoming elongated with gravity and the weight of the water as you're air drying. So if you're really looking to spring up your curls and achieve more volume, definitely try out diffusing with some of these scrunch diffusing techniques that I've shared before if you really want to shrink them up and enhance your curls. So now let's talk about what you would do if you wanted to elongate your curls. Maybe you don't like your very tight curls and you want to have a more elongated look you would basically do the opposite of all the things that I mentioned except for don't damage your hair you don't want to do that but you can use heavier products that have more oils and butters to elongate the curls so it basically adds more weight to them and weighs them down you would skip diffusing or you would do hover diffusing where you're not really using the diffuser at all to manipulate the shape of your hair and then you could also try stretch diffusing, which is another technique where you're basically using the prongs or even using your hands to stretch the curls and let it dry that way. So that way it sets those hydrogen bonds in place in a more elongated position. So I also wanted to share a little bit about my experience and how my curl pattern has changed. I'm sure you all have noticed a difference in my hair as I've made videos for several years now, but looking back at my hair in like 2018 was really the last year that my hair really was a lot thicker and also my curls looked a lot tighter, which is funny because my hair was a lot more damaged then and it's a lot healthier now. So it's really confusing of why, you know, as my hair became healthier, why it's a little bit looser. And when I actually look at the texture of my hair, it looks very similar now. Like I do still have like a little bit of that tighter curl pattern. However, my hair has significantly reduced in density. And I think a lot of it is due to the iron deficiency that I had. If you're not aware, I did have a very severe iron deficiency where I was anemic and I recently have recovered from that. Thankfully, I've been in the normal range with my lab work in the last 
last maybe six months or so. So it's definitely been a little bit since I've had normal levels, but this stuff takes a long time to change. I mean, you have to actually grow out your curls. And if my hair was falling out before and now it's not as much, it's going to have to actually grow back out, which is going to take years. I mean, to get a full length out of your hair. Another thing that's also changed is the length of my hair. I'm wearing it a lot shorter now than I used to. And I've really struggled to grow my hair out. I really can't get past like this length. And when I do, it just looks very stringy and uneven. Probably a lot of it had to do with the iron deficiency. So now I'm curious to see if I'm actually able to grow my hair a lot longer because I used to wear it a lot longer. I also had even some layers before and I can't really do layers now because it's gotten so much thinner. So I think the change in density is what makes my hair look so different now because there's probably a lot less hair to actually show a curl pattern, if that makes sense. So that's one thing that I've noticed is when hair is thinned, it kind of looks different in the curl pattern. Some other things that have also changed are my styling techniques. Back then or before I was really wearing my hair fully curly, I wasn't doing any of the curly styling techniques. I never brush styled, but we know that mechanical damage can occur from brush styling too much. And you know I love brush styling, so that's a little bit hard to give up because I like the smoothing effect that it has because my hair is also very coarse, which could also be part of the reason why my hair is coarse with that iron deficiency. That can also affect your hair texture, but a lot of times your coarseness or fine, medium, or coarse hair is determined by your genetics. But I just wanted to share that because I have heard some people say that when they do a lot of brush styling, they notice their curl pattern changing, whether if that's enhanced or if it's loosening it, if you're just over manipulating your hair. And maybe that's what I've been doing as I've been experimenting a lot with products and curly hair techniques. Maybe I just need to leave my curls alone for a while, give up brush styling. We'll see if I can manage to do that and just not manipulate it and just see what it is completely natural. And I have let my hair completely air dry before without any styling and it is this curl pattern. It's just a little bit longer because it becomes more elongated when you're not diffusing, um, but it has the same pattern. Like, but I also wanted to just reiterate the importance of not striving to have a curl pattern that you don't have naturally, whether if that's curlier or if that's less curly, it's really important to embrace the curls that you have. It can be really tough to look back on old photos of your hair. I definitely struggle with this where I look back and I'm like, wow, my hair was so much thicker, or so much longer. And that's not me now. I have lots of different things going on in my life, probably different health. I've aged, which is another big one. So we have to just not harp on how our hair used to be and really just learn to love the texture that we have now because there's only so much we can do about it. You definitely can't change your genetics. You can only change what you're doing externally to the lengths of your hair. And of course, maintaining a healthy diet and internal health is what's most important. Please share your story in the comments and also include any changes that you think might have led to this or you know maybe you moved or you started taking care of your curls and now they've gotten a lot curlier and you changed up your styling practices or your products. Share any of those types of details as well and I would love to read those. So if you enjoyed this video, I recommend checking out the one that I have linked right here on the screen. It's all about how to improve your curl retention, which is basically the bounce in your curls. And I also talk about curl memory, which is a really interesting topic that doesn't get covered very much and I show you some ways that you can go from more limp curls to bouncy curls if that's the look you're going for or if you're wanting to enhance your natural curls a little bit more. So I will talk to you over there. Bye everyone.